Bestbookbits.com presents The War of Art, Break Through the Blocks and Win Your Inner Creative Battles by Stephen Pressfield. A succinct, engaging and practical guide for succeeding in any creative sphere. The War of Art is nothing less than Sun Tzu for the soul. What keeps so many of us from doing what we long to do? Why is there a naysayer within? How can we avoid the roadblocks of any creative endeavor, be it starting up a dream business venture, writing a novel or painting a masterpiece? Best-selling novelist Stephen Pressfield identifies the enemy that every one of us must face, outlines a battle plan to conquer this internal foe, then pinpoints just how to achieve the greatest success. The War of Art emphasizes the resolve needed to recognize and overcome the obstacles of ambition and then effectively shows how to reach the highest level of creative discipline. Think of it as tough love for yourself. Whether an artist, writer, or business person, this simple, personal, and no-nonsense book will inspire you to seize the potential of your life. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The War of Art. The book in three sentences. Number one, resistance is what keeps us from sitting down and doing our best work. Number two, most of us have two lives. The life we live before we turn pro, and the life after. And three, resistance hates it when we turn pro. The five big ideas. Number one, resistance cannot be seen, touched, heard, or smelled, but it can be felt. We experience it as an energy field radiating from a work in potential. It's a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, distract us, prevent us from doing our work. Number two, if you take resistance at its word, you deserve everything you get. Three, the awakening artist must be ruthless, not only with herself, but with others. And number four, the best and only thing that one artist can do for another is to serve as an example and an inspiration. And five, the power to take charge is in your hands. All you had to do is believe it. The War of Art summary. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. What keeps us from sitting down is resistance. Most of us have two lives, the life we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. It was easier for Hitler to start World War II than it was for him to face a square blank of canvas. Resistance cannot be seen, touched, heard, or smelled, but it can be felt. We experience it as an energy field radiating from a working potential. It's a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, distract us, prevent us from doing our work. If you take resistance at its word, you deserve everything you get. Henry Fonda was still throwing up before every stage performance even when he was 75. The warrior and the artist live by the same code of necessity, which dictates that the battle must be fought anew every day. The highest treason a crab can commit is to make a leap for the rim of the bucket. The awakening artist must be ruthless not only with herself, but with others. The best and only thing that one artist can do for another is to serve as an example and an inspiration. We don't just put off our lives today, but we put them off till our deathbed. This very moment, we can change our lives. There never was a moment, and never will be, when we are without the power to alter our destiny. The working artist will still not tolerate trouble in her life because she knows trouble prevents her from doing her work. The working artist banishes from her world all the sources of trouble. She harnesses the urge for trouble and transforms it into her work. The more scared we are of of work or calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. Resistance is experienced as fear. The degree of fear equates to the strength of resistance. Therefore, the more fear we feel about a specific enterprise, the more certain we can be that that enterprise is important to us and to the growth of our soul. That's why we feel so much resistance. If it meant nothing to us, there'd be no resistance. If it meant nothing to us, there'd be no resistance. If you didn't love the project that is terrifying you, you wouldn't feel anything. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. The more resistance you experience, the more important your unmanifested art slash project slash enterprise is to you, and the more gratification you will feel when you finally do it. Rationalization is resistance, right hand manned. Its job is to keep us feeling the shame we would feel if we truly face what cowards we are from not doing our work. It's one thing to lie to ourselves, it's another thing to believe it. Resistance is fear, but resistance is too cunning to show itself naked in this form. Why? Because if resistance lets us see clearly that our own fear is preventing us from doing our work, we may feel shame at this, and this shame may drive us to act in the face of fear. Resistance doesn't want us to do this, so it brings in rationalization. Aspiring artists defeated by resistance share one trait. 
They all think like amateurs. They have not yet turned pro. The moment an artist turns pro is as epical as the birth of his first child. With one stroke, everything changes. I can state absolutely that the term of my life can be divided into two parts, before turning pro and after. The amateurs play for fun. The professional plays for keeps. To the amateur, the game is his advocation. To the pro, it's his vocation. The amateur plays part-time, the professional full-time. The amateur is a weekend warrior. The professional is there seven days a week. Resistance hates it when we turn pro. Someone once asked Somerset Magnum if he wrote on a schedule or only when struck by inspiration. I write only when inspiration strikes, he replied. Fortunately, it strikes every morning at 9 o'clock sharp. The artist committed himself to his call and has volunteered for hell. Whether he knows it or not, he will be dining for the duration of a, on a diet of isolation, rejection, self-doubt, despair, ridicule, contempt, and humiliation. What exactly are the qualities that define us as professionals? Number one, we show up every day. Number two, we show up no matter what. Number three, we stay on the job all day. Four, we are committed over the long haul. Five, the stakes for us are high and real. Six, we accept remuneration for our labor. Seven, we do not over-identify with our jobs. Eight, we master the technique of our jobs. Nine, we have a sense of humor about our jobs. And number 10, we receive praise or blame in the real world. The professional, though he accepts money, does his work out of love. A professional acts in the face of fear. The amateur believes he must first overcome his fear, then he can do his work. The professional knows that fear can never be overcome. He knows there is no such thing as a fearless warrior or a dread-free artist. The professional understands that resistance is futile and ingenuous. It will throw stuff at him that he's never seen before. A professional does not show off. A professional dedicates himself to mastering technique. A professional distances herself from her instrument. A professional does not take failure or success personally. The professional loves her work. She is invested in it wholeheartedly, but she does not forget that the work is not her. Her artistic self contains many works and many performances. Already the next is percolating inside her. The next will be better, and the one after that, better still. A professional recognizes her limitations. A professional is recognized by other professionals. Making yourself a cooperation or just thinking of yourself in that way reinforces the idea of professionalism because it separates the artist doing the work from the will and consciousness running the show. There's no mystery to turning pro. It's a decision brought about by an act of will. We make up our minds to view ourselves as pros and we do it. Simple as that. When we sit down after day after day and keep grinding, something mysterious starts to happen. A process is set into motion by which inevitably and infallibly, heaven comes to our aid. Unseen forces enlist in our cause. Serendipity reinforces our purpose. Serendipity reinforces our purpose. The power to take charge was in my hands. All I had to do was believe it. We're not born with unlimited choices. We can't be anything we want to be. A hack, he says, is a writer who second guesses his audience. When the hack sits down to work, he doesn't ask himself what's in his own heart. He asks what the market is looking for. Of any activity you do, ask yourself, if I were the last person on earth, would I still do it? And last, creative work is not a selfish act or a bid for attention on the part of the actor. It's a gift to the world and every being in it. Don't cheat us of your contribution. Give us what you've got. And that's a book wrap on The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Check out a YouTube channel with over 450 video book summaries uploaded previously. Like the video, comment on what you think, share on social media if you liked it, and if there's a book you want us to do a summary on, comment below. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you'll find 450 written book summaries uploaded where you can download in the PDF to read offline in categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationships, sales, spirituality, success, time management, and travel. If you're into the audio version podcast, check out our website, mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits, where you'll find 450 audio book summaries to listen to at your pleasure. Follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and listening to the War of Art book summary. Go out there, create your own masterpiece work, and have a great day. Take care.